so hello and welcome to lesson 19 in our study of scientific computing so in our previous video we went through what gate was version control systems and we also briefly talked about what github is and the differences between git and github so in this lesson we are going to go through some get commands okay so we are going to cover the following in this video how you can get get on your system and some get commands and then we'll do some practice to illustrate how to use those commands okay so i'm going to kind of read off a final year student of mathematics knust and i'll be taking you through this lesson so um if you want to get git on your device all right if you are using the linux operating system then you can open your terminal and type this there sudo apt install get all so you have to make sure you are connected to the internet then it will download the necessary packages for you and you have get installed on your device so this should work but if it doesn't work then you have to go to the internet and see what other means will do for you working so if you are using the windows operating system you know there are a few ways you can install git on windows but the most official build is available on download on the git website okay so you just go to this url here and you can download it okay all right so with what we are coming to do it's very important for you to have git on your system okay so please make sure you have git whether you're using the linux operating system you are using um mac os operating system like mac os or the windows operating system you have to go to the internet right now and try and get git okay so that you be able to practice along so now let's look at some git commands <coughs> so there are several git commands okay but some of them are git config git init git clone git add git comment git log git status git push git pull we have added such as git stash git remote git tag git show and a whole lot okay but we can't go through all of them so we'll go through these ones which are very very important <coughs> and will help us to perform the operations we want to do so you can go on the internet get commands and read wide about it okay so now let's take the first command that is get config so this command sets the author name and email address respectively to be used with your comments okay so mostly when we add a file to our starting area we would want to commit it and before you be able to commit it you should have set an author name and email address and it is this git config which helps us to do that so git config then two minus global user dot name then you bring your username here then you do it and you also bring your email address okay so this screenshot here is an illustration of how to use it so you can see that here we have git config global user dot name and my global user name is Rino Buedu. and <coughs> git config global user dot email then you can see the email address there Rino Buedu 88 at gmail dot com okay so that's how we use a git config so mostly before you start anything else it's very good for you to set your author name and your email address it's very very important so that you'll be able to commit your changes okay then we have the get init so this command is used to start a new repository all right and the sentence is get init then the repository name okay so you can see that here for instance i have 
started a new repository called computing so you can see get a net then computing then you can see that i have initialized an empty guild repository in my current working directory right okay so that's how we use a git init all right we use that to start a new repository then we have the git clone so this command is used to obtain a repository from an existing universal resource locator okay and this is the syntax here so git clone then you have your url here okay so the next one is get add don't worry okay after going through the commands we are going to use them all right so this command adds a file to the starting area all right and this is the sentence get add then the file so we can use get add star to add one or more files to the starting area so i have a screenshot here where I added a file called a1 okay then we have the get commit so mostly after adding a, a file to your starting area you would want to commit it okay so this command records or snapshots the file permanently in the version history so the sentence x get commit minus m then you can type your commit message so any message there but note that you can also use get commit minus a and this command commits any files you've added with the get add command and also commits any files you've changed since then so you can see that here i committed the file i added here a1 I didn't get commit minus M, I just added A1. And you can see the output here. Okay. So we have the get log. So this command is used to list the version for the current branch. So you see when I go to get log, it will tell me commit. And actually this happens to be the hash algorithm for the file i just committed and it'll tell you the author is renov bredu my email renov bredu88 at gmail.com if you could re recall we um when we started using a get config i set my author name and email address so that's what you can see here then it will tell you the date so the date i did this was wednesday august 25th then this was the time all right then the commit message was i just added a1 so that comes then get status so this command lists all the files that have to be committed okay so if you have files that you haven't committed yet then when you go to the get status it will list them for you so for instance i had two files a1 and a2 but only committed a1 and i've not committed what a2 so it listed a2 here for me okay so then we have git push so git push then variable name this is a syntax so this command sends the committed changes of master branch to your remote repository okay then we have the git pool and this is a syntax for it and this command fetches and merges changes on the remote server to your working directory so now that we've gone through most of the commands we would want to do some practice okay All right so i'm going to go into my bash terminal and we perform our operation from there so yes let's all practice okay so um on my desktop right now i'm currently at my desktop okay but if you're not in on your desktop you can use the cd to move to your desktop so for instance let's say if i was not on my desktop then i could say cd to now come to my desktop so i'm on my desktop okay and on my desktop i want to create a directory called computing 
right so we use the make directory mkdir computing so i've created a directory called computing then i want to move into the computing and now i'm in the computing so i would want to create some files right let's create some test files in there So now we use attach command to create the test file. So now I've created a test file called a1.txt. Let me also create a2.txt. And let me also use the nano to create another one, a3.txt. So now I'll have to type something. Then so I've created these three test files in um, the computing direction that I mean. So if I use the ls command, it will tell me that I have three test files here: a1.txt, a2.txt, and a3.txt. Okay, All right. So I just created a folder in simple terms. I just created a folder, and in a folder, I have these three files there a1.txt, a2.txt, and a3.txt. So now I want to move out of the directory to my desktop, right? So now I'm on my desktop, right? So we are now going to use the get commands that we have learned, right? So right now I want to add um, 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 create a git repository add something commit it and the rest but the first thing i have to do is to what set my author name and my email address so i use the get config command right so i go to so if you can recall we said this was a command so get config then to minus global user dot name then my name mm. so i'm using randolph okay all right so i have set my name then the next thing for me to do is to set my email right So you can do same right with your name and your email so right now i have set my author name which is randolph and my email address which is renovboidu88 at gmail.com okay so after doing that now i would want to create a new gate repository and i want to use that on the computing directory that i created i would want to use it as a gate repository okay so i'll go to get init then computing so remember we talked about the get init command right so i want to initialize the computing directory as a git repository okay so if i do that then you can see that you have initialized empty git repository in this right so there is it so right now what i can do is that i can then go into our computing directory now right which we just um initialize as a get repository so when i go there you can see that because i have initialized it as a git repository you can see master here so it's a master branch here okay when i go to ls you see i still have these test files inside a1.txt a2.txt and a3.txt so let's say I want to 
add a1.a3.txt let's say i want to add a3.txt right so my get repository so i'll just go to get add a3.txt so i want to add this to the starting repository so when i go you can see that it tells me warning lf will be replaced by this this file will have its original line endings in your working direction so yeah it has done that right so now i can commit it So I can commit it using a get command minus m then a commit message, right? So you can see that I've been able to what commit it, right? Uh -huh. So get commit I just added and it has committed it for me. So if I should go to get log, we talked about that one too, right? This is will tell me that um actually this one is the hash algorithm for the file i just committed that is a3.txt then it will tell me this is the author window this is my email address that i provided and the date is friday august 27th this was the time blah 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 and there is and the commit message was i just added a3.txt right so um but I can use the gist details to know those that I have in the current working directory but I haven't committed them. And we know that we had a1.txt, a2.txt, a3.txt, and we only committed a3.txt. That means when we run this, we are expecting to see a1.txt and a2.txt. So let's see. So you see, it tells us that we haven't committed a1.txt in a2 or dot tst okay so that means that later on if i'm connected to the internet i can push this to my central server right a remote server somewhere then it can be stored there for me so if you could recall what we talked about the centralized version control system and distributed version control system which we said git was you know, we said Gates was a distributed version control system, so you understand how it works. So you can see that I didn't have to be connected to the internet to perform all these changes. Right? When I'm done, I can then push this to my central server or remote server somewhere. Then whenever I, I can also have, then I'll also have a local copy of it on what? My device. Okay, so this was some brief practice with the git commands. Okay, and please practice more and read wide. To broaden your understanding, okay. So, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll also be doing some practice with parallel computing using MPI for Pi and the rest, okay. So, thank you very much, and see you in the next video.